I do want to talk a little bit about webinar best practices while we can. Now the first, I, I always have a few steps when providing a webinar. And then I'm going to go ahead and upgrade everybody else who has just joined us again. Um, and the first step really is to develop the webinar, develop who you think the webinar should be for, who, um, what message you're trying to, to get out there. Um, and then after you've done all that, after you've, you've decided who the presenter is, you, after you've decided um, who and what message you want to send out, um, then you're going to go ahead and start your outreach. Um, I've put this up there. I don't expect you to be able to, to read it because I know the text is really, really small. Um, but I think it's a really good example of having a plan. And this is not only for outreach, but this is a plan for just if things go wrong, if, um, which as we can, you know, as you've seen, of course they can, um, a plan for, for who you want to reach um, a plan for when you want to do outreach. I usually start um, sending registration links out at least two weeks in advance, sometimes just one. And part of that is that the sooner that you send those registration links out, this the um, the the less people will register and then not join. Because if you start your registration about a month out, then you get the risk of a lot of people registering, but not very many people showing up. And I think that that is a real, a real challenge. So this slide is really more talking about having a plan in general. Um, we are talking a little bit about what a webinar is, and a webinar really can be a lecture. It can be a um, an interactive experience, it can be a demonstration, but just think about who your who your community is, think about who you're trying to reach and what you're trying to do. Always do a test run. Um, when developing a webinar, even if the person that I am working with, the person who is presenting is really well um, familiar with either go to webinar or presenting at a webinar, I always do a practice run. And part of the reason for that is to develop a plan for if something goes wrong. Because go to webinar or any webinar platform is technology and as technology it can things can go wrong. Um, and it, you know of course we have seen that today. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and make sure everybody knows how to to do certain things, everybody knows what their role is, um, and that way we can go, always go ahead and be prepared. Um, be prepared for a good webinar and then be prepared if something goes wrong. Another thing that I would always recommend would be have a, having a co-producer. Um, of course, I have one today, and that Anka is my co-producer today. A co-producer's role is really to be there to, to answer any questions about the webinar tool so that the facilitator can really focus on um, facilitating the webinar, answering verbal questions and things like that. Um, another role that I usually have the co-producer do is taking a look at the questions pane and copying any content related questions and then putting them into um, a Google Doc. And that way, when we stop for questions, I can go ahead and look at any questions that have come in and read them verbally to the presenter or answer them if I am the presenter. Um, and that way, we it's, it's a little bit more organized and a little bit easier to manage. Um, it kind of goes into my next little tidbit of knowledge, which I almost always mute all participants, which today we have. Um, and, and part of the reason that I do that is that it takes a little bit of time to make sure everybody's audio sounds good and to make sure that they we can understand them. And if you have a webinar of um, even 30 people, it can be very, very time consuming if you're 
unmuting them and allowing them to ask questions um, actually via their mic and speakers if you can't understand them and then you have to troubleshoot audio on that end as well. Um, so I almost always, always, always mute participants. Um, you can take questions via the questions or chat pane and it usually works out just as well. And another, another really good tidbit is to be visual. Um, make sure whatever way you're doing a webinar, if you're doing it as a demonstration, if you're doing it as a straight up lecture, um, make sure you're as visual as possible. Um, and make sure that the slides that you're providing or the demonstration you're providing isn't directly mirroring what you're saying. You don't want what you're saying and what you're showing to be identical because you want people to be, to be viewing their screen and you want people to be listening to what you're saying, but you don't want people to be bored with either. And so it's really important to be visual and for the visual to be unique to what you're saying. And then troubleshooting. And I think we could all talk about this for a really long time today. Um, one thing that I was just thinking of, and I, I will go ahead and um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make this um, statement now is that I think maybe what happened the last time is somebody left the session and hit file exit leave webinar or not leave webinar they said file exit end webinar and that ended the webinar for everybody once you make everybody an organizer um, remember that whoever is an organizer can end the session for everybody and I think that's what happened the last time um, but that's something that I've been thinking about. I've been trying to think about what could have happened. And I'm thinking of all the possible scenarios. Um, I think that is what happened. And I, I think that is something to, to think about when you're troubleshooting a problem. Whether it's a problem with GoToWebinar, whether it's a problem that one specific um, presenter or attendee is having, to think of all of the possible scenarios and to try to find the solution that way. Um, so that's a very long way of saying, please don't hit file, exit, end webinar because you will end the webinar for everybody. Um, if people are, if somebody is having a problem not being able to hear, or if somebody is having a problem not being able to speak, um, First, of course, make sure that it's not on GoToWebinar's end. You can usually tell if it is um, on GoToWebinar's end if everybody's having the same problem. So today, when everybody was joining and no, we couldn't hear anybody speak, we knew that I, I knew that that was on GoToWebinar's end because not every single person would have the same problem. And in that case, I would end the whole webinar and restart it for everybody. If it is just one person having an audio issue, that's usually on their end and that is usually on their computer. And you can ask them what they're seeing. You can ask them to check the audio settings on their computer. You can ask them to check the audio settings in GoToWebinar and they would do that on the audio pane. Um, and you can ask all these questions. Sometimes they'll find the solution, sometimes they won't. Usually, if I cannot find the solution for them, I tell them to exit the webinar and rejoin and that almost always solves the problem for them. Um, if, if nothing else had. So always keep that in mind. And when dealing with a worst case scenario, a troubleshooting scenario, or a just the technology um, is not happy that day scenario, just always remember to keep calm. Um, the world's not going to end simply because the webinar was a little bit um, off that day. And I think that it's always best to just learn from your mistakes or learn from GoToWebinar's um, problems that day and it will actually make you a better presenter in the long run. So before I go into 
GoToWebinar, um, actually scheduling GoToWebinar, I do want to take a look and see if there are any questions that have come in, or if anybody has any questions just in general about those best practices, or if they have any comments that they want to make about that, um, go ahead, type those into the chat pane. And I'd be happy to talk a little bit about that. And then I do want to show you a little bit about actually scheduling a webinar and go to webinar and, and talk a little bit about changing presenters and things like that. And I'm not seeing so anything so far. Um, but again, go ahead, type anything into the into the chat pane when you get a chance, and we'll go ahead and answer those at that time or talk about any of the comments or questions you may have. So I'm going to go ahead, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I have some slides for scheduling a webinar. But I, what I want to do is actually take show you the actual site. So I'm going to exit out of my slideshow and bring up GoToWebinar. So what you should be seeing right now is the back end of my GoToWebinar account. Um, if I wanted to schedule a webinar, I would go ahead and go to the second button saying schedule a webinar. And I'm just going to do say test webinar. You just put the webinar name in. The description, I always try to be pretty careful with the description because you want to make sure that what your description of the webinar is is actually what you're going to be um, presenting on. So always make sure that you've talked to the presenters before you create this description. But for this, I'm just going to say this is a test webinar. You can select time and date and you can select several time zones not several, lots of time zones. Um, if it is an international webinar, I usually try to just have it as GMT. You can offer it for it to re recur. And you can, you do have some audio options. Um, unfortunately, the long distance number option is only available for a few countries. And I don't think any of the countries that are on this call are included in that. Um, so for the most part, people will need to use their mic and speakers. And you can, you can click edit here and specify the people who will be presenting. And by doing so, here, if you put their name and email address, so if I put my name and other email address, I would get a message saying that I've been made a panelist in a webinar, and it will give me a unique URL that will automatically log me in as that. So I'm going to say save and continue. You can upload a logo if you would like to, but that's certainly not required. And you can put custom um, Alyssa presenters in the waiting room, which is that initial screen that, that you see if nobody is sharing their screen. I'm going to say save. And then it will ask you for your registration questions. And one thing I did want to talk a little bit about with registration questions, and this also goes with survey questions. Um, the tools are very, very similar, and I, I'll show you how to add survey questions in a minute. Um, Always make sure that the questions that you're asking is information that you really, really have a use for. Um, if there's no reason to ask for somebody's address, then don't ask the question. And part of that is that if there are a lot of questions in the registration page, then people are less going to be less likely to sign up. Um, people tend to like pretty short forms. And so I try to make these forms as concise as possible. And also, I don't want to collect data that I'm not going to use. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's a good waste of your time, and it's definitely not a good, or a good use of your time, and it's definitely not a good use of the, of the attendees' time. And you can go ahead and preview the registration page if you'd like say okay that looks fine and then say save and email me the invitation and that's it and at that point if I went if I scrolled down the page from all my webinars sometimes it takes there we go it's right here um, to get the registration link 
you would just press this yellow button if you don't see anything, and I'll press it again. And you would copy that registration link, and that would take you to the registration page. And so that's a pretty quick run through of that. Um, if anybody has any questions about that creating a webinar, um, please let me know. I did want to show you that if you click on this drop down menu, there are other options that are available. One is the survey option, and if you selected that, you would get the option to um, answer in questions that you can that will then pop up for the attendees when they leave a webinar. And so I could say, what did you think of the webinar? And I can have it open an essay and say create, then it will be down here, and then I can save, and that question will automatically pop up after the webinar. Okay. And just so you know, um, the only people who do see that survey are attendees and not organizers. So um, following this webinar, I will actually be sending you all a separate link for the survey um, within a day or so. So you will be able to enter in answers to a survey, but it won't be automatic. I just wanted to let you all know that. So I'm going to go back to my slideshow. I'm going to skip all of this. And so I want to talk a little bit about hosting a webinar the day of and actually holding the webinar. The day of the webinar, I always start out with a practice session. As long as you are on a PC, you should have two options next to every webinar. One is practice and one is start. If you hit practice, then you can go ahead and check your audio before allowing everybody into the session. And then once you decide to start the webinar, there should be a button at the top that you can say start. And I always log in and have everybody, all the panelists or all the presenters log in about 20 minutes beforehand. And that way they can go ahead and um, type in or, or you know, check the audio, make sure everything's okay. And then I let everybody else in about five minutes before. I do always try to record the session even if um, I don't think we'll be giving the URL because I think it's a good thing for me to go back and look to see what I've done and what I could do better. Um, one thing to remember is to always check the settings and the settings are, are marked on the left with that red arrow. If you always make sure that say use go to what Go to meeting integrated audio, which will allow you to record everything everybody says, whether or not it's from a phone or from a computer, and then always select convert to Windows Media Player, because if you do not do that, it will have a codec on the file that it creates, which is a WMV file, but you won't be able to put it into YouTube or anything like that. Um, so always make sure that you, you select convert. And that's a little bit of a screenshot of what it looks like when you do start the session from in practice mode. And a reminder to always hit the record button. And what I did want to talk a little bit about right here is GoToWebinar is, and I think you've, you've realized this now, um, it's a screen sharing tool. Uh, you don't download anything into the tool, you don't you don't put the actual slide deck into GoToWebinar. It's you are showing your screen, so you're showing the PowerPoint from your screen. And how I usually handle that is I usually at the beginning of each presenter section give them control. Um, so I wasn't sure and if you if you do not want to, you don't have to, but if anybody would like me to try to give them control so we could um, you can see what that looks like. Um, go ahead, type that into the chat pane if you'd like to do that. Um, otherwise, I can go ahead and practice doing that with Anka very quickly so you can see what that change looks like. I'm just giving it a couple seconds to see if anybody else would like to. <laughs> and Anka, I'm going to go, um, if it's okay, if you want to unmute yourself, I'm going to go ahead and 
give control over to you just so people see what that change looks like. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and give you control. So what what is happening on Anka's end? Um, I, I, I guess, Anka, you can speak to that, what's happening on your end. Uh, so now I just uh, had my screen muted, and it is asking me, uh, it's telling me that I've been made a presenter, mm -hmm. and please close confidential windows. And when ready, I can choose either to show my screen or uh, to show my screen clean, which is which means hide icons, backgrounds, and taskbar, or to show um, one of, of uh, all the application I have open. So uh, if you, I can show you the screen clean. Okay. And uh, oh yes, so you can see the. Uh, the changing uh, slides and PowerPoint. Is it okay? Yep, looks good. It? Yep. Yes, looks looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that it's being okay. And uh, so okay. <laughs> should should I show anything else? Like you can see that I have. Uh, Firefox opened as well with numbers mm -hmm. uh, valid for not Poland definitely <laughs> uh, but uh, I can I can switch from one view to another within seconds great thanks Anka and then usually what I do um, because what, what could happen is that Anka could just give me control back. But what I usually do is I, I designate one person to be the, both the giver and the taker of control. So I'm going to go ahead and take control back. And you do that by just selecting change presenter at any time. And you can select anybody who's on the list. And so now you are seeing my screen once again. And so if anybody has any questions or, or does want to try that later, please just let me know. And one other thing that I wanted to mention, and I, I, we are running a little short on time because of our, our mishaps at the beginning, but um, we, you do have the option of creating polls within the webinar. Um, you can do that live, so if you looked at the poll pane on your control panel, you could select manage polls and it would bring you up to the GoToWebinar page. I'll just show you that really quick, what that looks like. And it looks just like that survey question um, form or the registration question form. Um, you would just put the question that you want to, want to ask. And then if you actually added one, you would have an additional option to launch a poll. And then people can answer those questions in real time. And that's actually really, really helpful. And of course, we already have gone over the chat pane and the questions pane. And always remember that the questions from the audience are coming into that questions pane and not the chat pane. It is a little bit confusing. Um, so just always remember that. And then after the webinar, um, there are a few things that I always like to do after the webinar. Um, one thing is to, of course, generate that attendee report. And you would do that by going to webinar history on the left and then selecting the webinar you want to collect data from and then selecting the yellow button to generate the attendee report. The attendee report will be muted. The attendee report will both create um, reports from the registration information as well as from the survey information. And then I send that information to everybody who was involved with creating the webinar. 
I always find that it's really, really helpful to give everybody the pertinent information because that way they can all improve their, their presentations in the future. And so with that, that was our very short and sweet introduction to GoToWebinar. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want to talk about? Because I know that it was um, a little bit of a bumpy start. So I would like to make sure that everybody has had their questions answered. So go ahead and type those into the chat pane if you'd like. And Anka, do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to <laughs> share with us? Uh, only that it was really fascinating to see that it can crash twice. Uh, and it's not, it's not that if it happens once, it would never happen again. Right. And there is so many things that can go wrong that it is good to have somebody's help, I think. Definitely, definitely. And I, I don't want people to think that this is something that happens with every webinar because most webinars you'll do go off fine. There might be one or two people who have audio problems. But there will always be that one webinar every few months that you do that um, things will happen like this. And so just always have a plan. Always um, make sure that you that you keep calm and you just you salvage what you can and usually it will still work out. So um, I want to thank everybody for being with us today. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure talking with you. If you do have any questions, I'm going to put my email address into the chat pane and you can go ahead and email me there. So again, everybody, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for for, thank you, Magdalena. Thank you for um, dealing with all the the troubleshooting and everything. So um, I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you.